Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kentucky Go Digital Live. My name is Courtney Durossett, and I will be leading the show today. And I am so excited to have an, an awesome crew from Johnson County Schools with me and an amazing panel for, for our Kentucky Go Digital Live team below. You can see that we have Elaine Abanatha. She is the Digital Innovation Leader for jo um, Jefferson County Public Schools. We have um, Allison Langley, a teacher, special ed educator, facilitator at Hardin County Schools. Amy Buss, technology resource teacher in Warren County Public Schools. Angie White, director of instructional technology with Oldham County Schools. Hello, guys. How are you all today? Thrilled to be here, and I am excited to learn from this awesome district on their digital tools, usage, and everything else. It's going to be a great show. Um, we have um, a wonderful district, Johnson Central. We have superintendent with us today, Tom Cochran. We have the PD coordinator and instructional supervisor, Sandy Music. We have the district assessment coordinator and instructional supervisor and federal programs coordinator, she just told me earlier, Shauna Patton. And an amazing digital learning coach, Lisa Sawyer. An amazing team. And what's really cool about it is they all work together and they're kind of a family with their approach. And uh, the rest of the show, I, I, I just, I've gotten chills all weekend. We've gone back and forth with it. And um, I'm, I'm thankful for the panel that we have. And I hope you all learn so much from this district because they have a lot to share. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Superintendent Cochran so he can share some of the information that they have. Uh, that they've done here in the Johnson County. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, let me begin by sending a huge shout out and thank you to the Kentucky Go Digital team uh, for providing us the opportunity to share, learn, and network. I'd also like to send a word of thanks out to the uh, KDE, uh, David Couch, who, by the way, is a Johnson Central graduate, Matt Jury, Courtney DeRossett, who's with us today, Laura Roganis, and Ben Maynard for all the support that they provide to, to our school system uh, today and, and throughout the entire year. To give a, a brief overview, sharing now, I'm sorry. To give a brief overview of Johnson County Schools, our North Star, or why, is to provide a world-class education uh, that develops and grows every single student to, into a well-rounded, life-ready person uh, who is ready for whatever comes his or her way. Uh, after high school, whether it's post-secondary, whether it's college, uh, technical school, or career. In our district, we're in the middle also of a complete overhaul of our culture. And part of this change is a focus on four key ideals when working to create vigor in our schools. Those are love, learning, leadership, and legacy. And, and, and to give a brief overview of today's session, we're going to include discussion and demonstration of the following topics. I'm going to begin by discussing our central office leadership team or a Colt slide deck and our weekly Google Meet. And then I'll also discuss the, our new communication initiative. Then Ms. Music will detail our Eagle induction process for, for new teachers to Johnson County Schools, as well as the certified education platform. Ms. Patton will show and discuss our non-traditional instructional digital collection system. And then Ms. Sawyer will share our ProLearn individualized online professional learning and development system as well as Google Classroom for School. In discussing our culture shift, another key component of our why is creating a culture of innovation. And in thinking about this culture, I'm very passionate and determined that all of our all of us, starting with me, including every administrator, district and school level, uh, model and practice the use of any technology that we expect our students and teachers to utilize in the classroom. That being said, we're in the beginning phases of creating, creating efficient digital systems. Uh, we're doing this for the ultimate goal of preparing students for life beyond high school. But we also create these systems uh, for many other reasons. One, to allow every person in our district access to using new technologies and to encourage each eagle to fail forward. We want it to create that safe environment where we understand that most of our learning and growth comes through learning through our failures and setbacks. We also want to make sure that our school family, from students to the superintendent, are accountable to familiarize themselves, ourselves, with the technologies that we are using in our school and in our global communities. We also want to allow for greater efficiency and in individual school and district organization, as well as to help remove any barriers that our students and staff may have. And finally, to have processes in place so that our district can grow and flourish far or long after we're gone. After we moved on. First, 
I want to share our central office leadership, our cult meeting process. So for the past two years, I, I've been superintendent for two years, and for the past two years, our cult team has been meeting weekly to discuss what's going on in our district, uh, individual and team priorities for the upcoming week, and weekly plans uh, for school visits. Each member of our cult team uh, completes a weekly cult document. And I believe that although these meetings are extremely helpful in getting and keeping the cult team on the same page, uh, th these meetings and the document could and should be adjusted to allow for better communication among the cult team as well as our school administrative leadership team. So therefore I made changes to this process. And I think now you can see an example of what our cult document is going to look like. And this slide shows that example. Uh, to give full credit, though, I want to let you know that this new format idea was actually taken from the KYDLC model. So thank you all for allowing me to steal this. Uh, weekly, our members of the cult team will complete one slide detailing their week, discussing current relevant topics, and reminding everyone of the upcoming events. We will continue to meet each Monday morning, but the change in the process is occurring with what I do with the information that I gather and the communication that we have. Uh, during our current book study, uh, that we have in our cult team, Mr. the power of positive, positive teams. Uh, Gordon discusses the importance of meeting with all of our teams regularly and consistently. So I'm going to use this cult document to do just that. Each Monday afternoon, all of our principals uh, will meet with me via Google Meets or Hangouts to discuss uh, items in the slide deck. And they will have the opportunity, opportunity to discuss um, any of the topics, ask any questions they may have, and they're also going to have access to the slide deck, which they can then share with their schools during Monday meetings. And I believe this new process will, act, will greatly increase the communication and will allow for our teammates to be on the same page. Now, noticeably, noticeably missing from the new cult document, I don't have, uh, forgive me, I don't have an example of the old cult document, but part of that document, the old one, requires our central office leadership team to complete a plan of two schools that they want to visit each week. Uh, so instead, the new document, with the help of Ms. Sayer, I've created a Google Living Calendar that each member of the cult team will use to complete details about which schools and classroom they actually do visit each week. And I, I'm hopeful and I feel that this data will better help us see patterns of school visits, allow us to make any adjustments uh, to give certain schools more attention if needed. And the one I'm very, one of the another initiatives I'm very excited about, uh, we push the thought and believe that we must be the authors of our own story. Uh, if we don't tell our story, somebody else is going to. And we believe that effective communication via social media outlets help create a welcoming environment that showcases all of the, our stakeholders. Um, for our district, we found that, that the bulk of our users are Facebook. Uh, for other districts, we know that Twitter is a big, big, uh, platform and we've tried and we're continuing uh, going to keep making those efforts but right now facebook is where it's at uh, we also don't believe that where there's an absence of positive communication negativity fills that void and on top of that we operate with the belief that transparency is is the best practice uh, so with all those things being said our school system has made an effort to increase communication to all of our stakeholders by a variety by using a variety of media outlets and we're extremely excited by this plan our ultimate goal, of course, is focusing on a communication plan to build a community that is emotionally tied and attached to Johnson County Schools. Uh, we work to develop a new web page that's more clean, it's crisp, and uh, we feel much more user friendly. This will allow our stakeholders an avenue to stay up to date with access to live to a live feed, a daily cafeteria menu, news from administrators, student stories. We actually have our high school um, media classroom we're going to be writing stories that'll be posted on the web page and even emergency uh, notifications we're also pushing out a new app uh, that allows all things jc and our kind of our mantra is all things jc right in your pocket and this app contains nearly all of the same information as a web page it allows us to send push notifications to select group of followers and in my opinion it's going to be extremely helpful when making early morning decisions about calling off school or putting school on delays I always struggled with making the all call because I hated to wake up parents and, and, and small children at 430 in the morning if unnecessary. So this will help us prevent that. And also, if we ever have a crisis situation, uh, which we pray that we don't, but we need to prepare in case we do, this app and the push notifications will allow us to send out accurate information 
for those affected in a timely manner. Hopefully that will help us to, to get the truth out rather than a bunch of rumors. Uh, in addition to those, each school and district has also created Facebook and Twitter pages to communicate with, with all of our users. We're supporting all of our staff and our efforts to post the great things that are going on in the classrooms and schools. Everyone, every staff member has um, a username and login uh, to enable them to actually post our live feed to the Twitter page and the Facebook page by school. And to celebrate and encourage uh, uses by our staff, I've also started recognizing posts through a superintendent post of the week. We started our first one a couple of weeks ago, and, and uh, the first lady that uh, earned that was, was really excited, so we're happy to see that, and we hope that that grows as well. And in, in our attempts to increase traffic on our social media outlets and our web, new web page, all while providing this information, I've also included video updates to our pages. Um, uh, I don't like looking at myself, but I've seen that the video, they get a lot more hits than pictures or just words. So ultimately though, this initiative is all about being transparent and getting as much information to our school community as we possibly can. Now I'm going to turn over uh, this uh, presentation, Miss Music, to discuss our Eagle induction system. And good morning all, or good afternoon, not sure what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to discuss the Eagle induction process in Johnson County. Um, of course, this year there was the elimination of the KTIP, the Kentucky Teacher Internship Program. And because of that, it prompted our district to look at um, the most effective way to onboard new teachers to Johnson County. So we wanted a process that included, you know, providing up to three years to support to to ensure that the strategies uh, continue in our district with fidelity. Um, one of the first places we started was with, of course, the mentor and the resource teacher. Um, so we provided uh, training for uh, the mentors and resource teachers that we had chosen in our district. And uh, that training was a six hour all day training. Um, it consisted of a lot of training on collaboration, coaching and caring about the new teacher. Um, we also, uh, as you see on your screen, um, we included a team drive. And so that team drive was not only for the mentors, but also for the mentees and the principals uh, who house the new teachers in their school. Uh, so I'll talk about that sort of first. Um, the team drive, uh, especially for the mentors, if you go on, there are specific resources um, in that folder to help them help the new teacher. So if you have a teacher who, for example, is struggling with questioning, then there is resources in there on 3B specifically for that that helps guide um, that mentor to help the mentee. Um, also, we included on the team drive our certified evaluation plan. Um, we included the Kentucky frameworks for teachers. Um, we also included uh, the Danielson framework because even though, you know, our model models the Danielson framework, there are resources available in uh, some of those documents for the new teachers and also the mentors. Uh, so all things um, mentor-mentee is on the team drive. Um, in the mentee resources, there are the documents that they need to upload um, their digital binder, which I'll talk about in just a minute, um, observation forms, collaboration forms, uh, all of that can be housed on the team drive. And that way it was so important. That way everybody had access to everything that they needed uh, going forward. So um, that was sort of our, our share out was the team drive. After we trained the mentor and um the resource teachers, we pulled in, of course, our inductees, and we had the training with, with them as well in how could the mentors support them and what were some of the other components um, that was going to be part of this onboarding or induction process in, in Johnson County. What we found is our new teachers to Johnson County sort of fall in three categories. Um, they're either traditional teachers, they just graduated from college with teaching degrees. They're MAT teachers uh, who are maybe professionals who have degrees in um, other areas but want to teach, so they're, uh, they're called MAT. And then there's also our coming to Johnson County uh, teachers who have experience. So they may have worked in another district or another state 
and now they're working in Johnson County. So those were sort of the three we felt like clear categories of new teachers to Johnson County. And so um, some important things that we wanted to make sure they all had, we wanted to make sure that they all had the mentor assigned. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they all had um, a clear path to collaboration uh, with someone who possibly either not only works in their own building, but works at their own grade level or works in their own content area. And so we tried to match our mentors and mentees up that way. Uh, we also ensured what we called spa days, which were two days, one day in the fall, one day in the spring, that the mentor and the mentee could get together, um, okay. observe one another, um, not only observe one another, but also even plan possibly to visit another teacher in that building or another teacher in the district because uh, lots of great things are going on. And uh, so we wanted the observation to go just beyond um, the mentor coming in and observing the mentee. We wanted it to go both ways and then also observe other good teaching in other classrooms. Um, another important component was the... Um, new teacher trainings and workshops. Uh, we offered one to two trainings uh, all year. Er, we actually finish up this week with the last one. And that training uh, and those workshops was helped to get all teachers the same information of great strategies that we want in our classrooms in Johnson County. Um, some of those trainings was tools for teaching, classroom management, engagement strategies, questioning strategies. Um, assessment literacy training. So we, again, we just wanted everybody, whether you were a brand new teacher or a teacher with experience at Johnson County to have those same good trainings and beginnings in Johnson County. Um, and then I think the last part was we wanted a way for all teachers to showcase their evidence that they've had a successful year in Johnson County. And that's done with something we call the Educator Effectiveness Evidence Digital Binder. And really what this is, again, is it's a one place to showcase everything, the collaboration logs, the spa days, um, the uh, technology integration, the professional development, professional learning, all of it in one place. And this digital binder is um, set up uh, by the mentee, and they share it with the mentor throughout the, the year, throughout the school year. But on April 15th, they will share it with the superintendent, assistant superintendent, and myself and the principal. And we will review it to see the evidence of their growth in this first year in Johnson County. And so what you're looking at right now is the table of contents of one of our teachers who agreed to share hers a little early for us, Madison Priest. And she was a speech teacher. So again, it didn't matter whether you were a regular teacher, special ed teacher, speech teacher, experience, non-experience, the digital binder become your way of um, showcasing your evidence of success for the year. Uh, so here's the first page of the binder, uh, which is just meet the teacher. Another thing we really tried to do was make sure that the documents on the inside were meaningful. So like the meet the teacher, for example, is something that she would have sent home to her kids the first week of school to introduce herself to the parents of those children. Um, this next page, of course, is her uh, personal mission statement, uh, followed by self-reflection of her first day of teaching in Johnson County. And uh, goes on, and she, you know, we ask them to choose a, a favorite quote. You know, what is your favorite motivational life quote or education quote? Um, we didn't give a lot of detailed guidance um, on the binder because we wanted it to be um, expressive of the teacher. So we give them the outline of what we wanted and then we want them to develop their own sort of personality through it. Uh, her professional growth goal, which of course, you know, is part of the certified evaluation plan. All teachers do that anyway. And so that's uploaded in there. Um, of course, her listing of professional development opportunities she's had both in district and out of district, her technology integration, um, there's other uh, pieces in here like data 
lesson planning. And I really love some examples that I'm going to show you with the lesson planning. Because, again, not a lot of guidance on what we wanted in there. Just that we wanted them to showcase evidence of effective lesson planning. And so when you go into um, their documents, you see, and I think I'll wait and show Miss Hannah's um, uh, in just a minute, uh, and show her her lesson planning um but the activities that they have in the mind are all just super examples of their effectiveness as new teachers again this is hannah this is another teacher she teaches second grade at central elementary uh same outline you know so same expectations uh, in terms of what's in there very different um work samples uh one i want to showcase here is the flip grid we did put this in so that all uh, new teachers to Johnson County would use Flipgrid. Maybe they have it, and this sort of forces them into it. This is an example of these three new teachers connected, and this is an example of Hannah's uh, Flipgrid on effective strategies she's using in her classroom. Hi, my name is Hannah Hensley, and I'm a second grade teacher at Central Elementary School. Some strategies I use in my classroom in order for my students to be successful and reach their learning goals are making sure I give them clear expectations and post the learning targets on the board. I make sure to let my students know exactly what they need to do in order to be successful. So in my classroom, I've used strategies such as modeling with anchor charts, um, engaging students in questioning, and grouping um, for small group discussions. I use Kagan strategies such as the Think Pair Share and Quiz Quiz Trade in order for my students to be actively involved in the lesson. I use formative assessments such as inside-outside circles, um, scoot games, exit slips, and write the rooms to see if my students are fully grasping the concept. My students really love these activities because they're fun for them, yet they're also learning in the process. Now, if I see that a group of students didn't get a concept, then I will pull that group aside and reteach if needed. So some evidence to how I know that these strategies are effective are student data, student participation in the lessons, and overall student performance. The other part of her digital <coughs> binder, uh, besides the flip grid, was her lesson plan. But you can see she's not only put an example or a few examples, but she put her entire year plan book um, in this digital evidenced binder. So we can go in and see every day what she's done throughout the year with her students. I just think that's a great example um, inside this binder. Uh, another example in the binder is the leadership um, activity and the leadership page we asked them just like you know the old portfolios with k-tip they had to do like a leadership activity we told them we didn't want it to be an activity we wanted it to be authentic what are you doing in the school as an educator even though you're a first year teacher maybe you're a third year teacher to um, help lead in the school and so we want it more authentic to you know, maybe they belong to um, an, an education group. Maybe they lead an action group in their school. Uh, whatever the true leadership um, capacity that they have, even as a new teacher. Um, again, the showcase, all, all the evidence is inside there. And um, that's sort of the overview and um, April 15th well they'll give those to again the the team here and we'll look at them and then Mr. Cochran will have a successful uh, event for them those who are who have been successful in the first year in Johnson County okay there's a few questions um okay. Allison and Elaine do you all want to pop on and um we're, we have like a back panel and there's some comments and some oohs and ahs but uh Elaine or Allison sure uh, I will Oh, go ahead. Go oh. ahead, Elaine. No, it's okay. Oh. Okay. Um, so, just wondering, are the binders open for all new teachers to kind of see what other teachers are doing to um, cultivate a kind of a competitive spirit for these new teachers to create these awesome resources? That's a good question. And this year, no. Again, this has sort of been our pilot year. Uh, they've shared it with their mentors to, uh, so far to date. Um, the next year we will have what we call exemplars and so we will share out those exemplars with the new teachers so that up front they sort of uh, have some examples uh, we didn't do that this year i didn't even create a rubric this year 
uh, the reason, and it bothered me not to, <laughs> was that I wanted, um, I wanted some imagination, and I, I didn't want to stifle and sort of put a rubric in there that might actually limit, you know, the good resources and the good evidence that's in the digital binder. But we will have exemplars from this first year to share out. But good question. Thank you. Okay, well, we do have one from the chat. If um, So, uh, Casto Greta, or Greta Casto, she asked if leadership comment um, throughout these, on the like throughout the year, do they comment on these portfolios at all? No, actually, it's just a, a, a share between the, the mentor and the mentee up until the April 15th uh, deadline. And um, again, they, you know, they've, they've had guidance on it. That guidance is, um, was at the front when we trained the mentors. It was also there when we trained the mentees. And so just um, it really the, common, the collaboration and discussion was just between the mentor and mentee. I had a quick comment. I know that I'm here, but what I really liked was it's not just the teachers. They're looking at all professionals. So you've got their speech path that sometimes, not that they feel left out, but this is a way to help them grow too. So it's almost like taking the old K tip and now molding it so that even your experience, and I know Allison, you and I were talking about even your experienced teachers can grow from this process. So it's, it's a district wide growth opportunity. Yeah, we even uh, had a little question about the fact that we had some teachers coming in our district with 10 years experience. So they're not new teachers. Uh, should they do the same workshops, you know, those kinds of things. But again, our final decision was we wanted really strong, good strategies across our district to continue. And, you know, maybe even because you have experience doesn't necessarily mean you've had um, the professional opportunities to see what certain things look like and, and the expectations for Johnson County may be necessarily a little bit different than maybe from another county or state. Good morning. It's good to be with everyone today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about our NTI process in Johnson County, and uh, Mr. Cochran and a few of us, back in 2014-15, we actually wrote the first NTI uh, program, and it was approved, but I will have to say that it has certainly come full circle by that time. You know, we had things written in that first one uh, that the first NTI day would happen after we missed so many days of school and just a lot of little things that we didn't really, you know, we were just trying to meet the letter of the law and make sure that we got some good instruction within the NTI days. But I will tell you that uh, thanks to the help of a whole lot of people and Lisa being one of those people, we are really onto a good thing with our, um, our NTI days in Johnson County. I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong around this table, but I believe we've had to use all 10 of them this year. Uh, but they have been most successful and the documentation that's come in has just been unbelievable. So today I want to take you through some of that process. Our number one ultimate goal is, the, is that a regular school day and a non-traditional day would mirror each other. And teachers have come together and looking at their pacing guides uh, that they've worked really hard, you know, through Sandy's uh, professional development and learning that she's provided throughout the summer, they really have paced where they would be at different times of the year. And so they, they pretty much know we start missing school in December, um, most, most usually. And sure enough, we did again this year. But teachers already knew what to do. They were already so prepared. So today I want to tell you and share with you uh, some of the things that we do to get our entire school system prepared for that. So to begin with, back in the summer, Lisa actually attended uh, one of our administration meetings here at the board office, and she took every one of us through the Google Classroom and helping us log in, helping us see what it would look like, uh, and just getting us all prepared. And so likewise, then the principals and Lisa went out into the schools and did the same thing. Um, and if we open up that first one, Lisa, um, under the PLCs, we can see some of those best practices in action. 
Um, Lisa actually attended every professional learning community within the Johnson County school system and I have to say it took her a long time to do that. But here is an example of where at Highland Elementary the teachers are learning how to utilize the Google Classroom to document and showcase innovative non-traditional days. Uh, and they, they didn't wait until it was time for that first NTI day to happen. They used um, this process throughout the year, they actually worked with children to show them how, what they would do whenever they were home. And so they had a lot of practice runs within the classroom um, as well. So this is just a really good example of one school and how she's working within a PLC with them. Um, the, you know, um, the, next, the next one I want you to open, Lisa, is the Johnson County Pro Learn. Um, this didn't just happen overnight. So ProLearn is just an example of how our teachers have become more virtual, more digital than they had been in the past. So here's some examples of where Mr. Cochran is presenting and Sandy is presenting uh, actual certificates to some of our teachers who have um, become certified in, in, in some form of digital, be it uh, Google Classroom, be it um, just some kind of digital badging that has really helped them, which then in turn helps them be more successful in the regular work day, the regular school day, as well as within the NTI days. So it's just a very natural flow. And so whenever these certificates are issued to these teachers, they are so proud because Mr. Cochran tweets them, we put them on social media all over the place, and, and it becomes a big deal. And so that healthy competition, we see more and more and more of our teachers that are doing that. So that's why we even included the bullet uh, with, the, with the Pro Learn, just to show you how that kind of thing, um, how it's utilized and how it's helped this whole process of NTI days. Uh, if we click on the uh, rethinking instruction, this just gives you a, a wealth of great ways of, of utilizing your NTI days. You can use Flipgrid, you can use uh, Wakelet, you can use um, the Screencastify, the list goes on and on. And we do see so many of these programs that are being utilized within the NTI days. And then we have set up a very, um, um, exact way for teachers to get the information back in to the district so we can show that um, everything has been followed correctly. We're following all the guidelines that KDE has put in place for us. Um, if we get a site visit from KDE, we're certain that we have everything in place that uh, they would certainly say, oh yes, you're welcome to go ahead and do this for another year is what we're hoping. Shauna, I'm just going to jump in. I had a quick remark over here that people were talking about even districts that do not have NTI days they can benefit teachers can benefit by all of those tools that you just showed because think about when kids are absent you know if I'm a teacher and I can put that on Flipgrid or I can put that on Wakelet and if you, you use more just then as your as your as one of your pages um, all of those tools are for every kid every teacher so while you're implementing NTI think about how many tools you're exposing your teachers to just on regular a regular day um, and it's think. also those kids that need it to be reiterated for them to go back that it just compiles it's just across the board great practice love it right. we actually talk about those kinds of things all the time in our Monday morning cult um, meetings that we have that Mr. Cochran has put in place because you know when a teacher is absent and you're not we're not talking an NTI day here but when a teacher is absent, she could already have all of these things in, cl in place. And we've had, we've had teachers that have videoed lessons. We've had a lot of flipping the classroom going on. The list goes on and on. So you're so right. It's not just for the NTI days, but, you know, using Nearpod in a, in a lesson uh, on a daily basis. And like you say, Courtney, the Flipgrid is just a wonderful opportunity to um, really have a high digital classroom while meeting the standards and then some. So it's, a, it's just good all the way around. Um, if we look at the resources located in the materials post, Lisa, I think this is where, um, this is a good example of where we actually, we won't open that, but we have one of our teachers at WR Castle, and she is doing a step-by-step, -step, I think it's like a nine-minute video 
of how to make your NTI day the best that it can be. And she does an exceptional job and she takes you through the process. Um, so we, Lisa has posted all kinds of resources like that that could help any new teacher, any seasoned teacher. You know, this is my 31st year in education. I would definitely, if I were still in the classroom, I would definitely have to watch some of these videos to help me know the very best uh, the very best things to be doing with my students on an NTI day or in on a regular classroom day. So if we go to our lesson plans, um, right, uh, yeah, I think it will open. I really want you to see this because we worked very hard. Um, that we, I should have gone back and told you at the beginning that we have created an NTI district team and it's um, filled with a lot of teachers and so they're always looking at ways of making this better and talking with Lisa about what documents should look like, what should we include to make it mirror that regular uh, class day just as much as possible. And this is a good example. So for every NTI day that we have, and she's, Lisa has it set up that all 10 are actually located here, you can see that teachers have to include what are their targets for that day? What learning target? What standards are they going to cover? What are the outcomes and what are the next steps? So a part of their process is that um, the principals can actually see this and the principals can actually make comments to the teachers about this at that time. And so that's a really, really, really good plus. And some of our principals actually did this year. And so that makes it more personalized for everyone. And some of that feedback that we always are, are teaching about and training our new teachers on, this is a prime example of how we can put that in place. So for every day that we miss with an NTI, then those lesson plans would be filled out uh, completely and that would be a part of the documentation that they are required to to submit. Uh, I really like this next one, the communication log. One thing that we ask every teacher in Johnson County to do and that is during an NTI day and they have to have everything posted by 10 a.m. that morning that we want them to make some kind of communication with every student in their classroom. Now for some that would be um, an email for some, that would be a text or a phone call. But whichever way that they do that, we want those student, the student's name, the parent's name listed, as well as what is the form of communication that was used. And we go a step further, just a quick blurb about what that communication was about. This not only helps us as a district, but it also helps the teacher know these are the kinds of questions my students had. This is something that they might, maybe six of my students were struggling on. So it really gauges for the teacher what she can do. Just like, again, this is what we would do through our formative assessments within a regular school day. What are my students having trouble on? What are they all getting without any problem at all? And you know, all of this leads into what we've all been trained on with mastery learning. Using an NTI day, that doesn't stop the flow of learning. Actually, we can see what students have mastered during that time too, and it helps us know what, what pathway to take with those students. Um, if we look at the next one with the assignment score tracker, I really like this for that mastery learning as well because it will, um, the, the teacher actually will list the students names again and then she will put the scores. So I'm thinking about, and I know we've talked several times with our teachers, this is where their exact path scores will go. We're not a district that uses uh, some of the more uh, um, there's a lot of districts that use MAP and different things like that. We use different, we use one that's called Exact Path. I don't know if I should say that today, but we do. And it is a great way of putting kids with, within a pathway and knowing exactly where they're at. And that's how it gets its name, Exact Path. So this is a great way to put scores from that program. It's a great place to put their IXL scores um, and, and again to check that mastery for learning and, and that continues through this entire process. Um, all right, let's go to just a couple of more. And so what a teacher would do is she would click on her school or he would click on their school. And then they would actually, and I think Lisa, you can scroll down and you can see um, on, day, on NTI day participation, they would tell how many of those students participated in a digital way. How many of those students had to have that packet. And we know this and we can gauge this pretty good as a classroom or as a school or as a district because in the very beginning of the school year, the students are polled. The 
parents are polled to how, how, how many of the students have digital access at home. And so that kind of helps, helps the teacher know how many packets to prepare for. And, you know, in a district our size and in a district with the poverty rate that we have, surprisingly enough, we have a lot of students that do have a means digitally. And we are a one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative from third or fourth grade on up. And so that really helps with this process as well. So a teacher will actually just go in and um, for each day they will um, note how many participated with the packet and how many participated digitally. So this is a really good way for us to keep account of that kind of thing. So we're going to move on because of time's sake and go to some of the social media celebrations. And you know, as Mr. Cochran said in the beginning, we all use social media of some form. One of us may say we don't like Facebook that well, but we like to tweet. Another one likes to use um, Instagram, you know, that kind of thing. So if Lisa will click on to the virtual poetry gallery wall, you can see here's a great example of where two teachers at our middle school, they actually used Padlet and uh, I believe they used Flipgrid. And they did a, a virtual poetry walk with all of their students. And so we got their permission to put this up today, but it was a great way um, to reflect on the poetry that was being used in the classroom and using some great digital tools to do that as well. So this happened actually on an NTI day. On this one, this is the NTI wellness. So it, we're showing this because it's not just the reading and the math. It's every content area and every special class that we have. Uh, and this is from a practical living physical education class. And this is Ms. Conley's. Um, she had the students do uh, something physically fit during their non-instructional day, their non-traditional instructional day. So then they had to prove to her that they did. And she got some really nice footage back for us to share. And um, at, at the high school, we're actually an ACE district and we're using ACE with our ILPs, our individual learning profiles. But Miss Nikki Cottle actually had her students on an NTI day uh, work on some research about the cost of college, the impact of, of, of um, the cost and also the importance of their ACT scores and, and that kind of thing. So they were able to keep the flow of what they would be doing on a regular school day uh, and still a great learning opportunity at home as well. I like this one because the teacher that's uh, represented here in this one, she just returned from the KISTI conference and she did a, a presentation on this very a lesson that she did on one of her NTI days. She actually used Zoom and uh, she had, uh, she is a reading recovery teacher. So she has some students, this particular student is a very reluctant about, uh, not really confident in her reading. So she, Miss uh, Davis, chose some books that the student was very, very interested in and she likes cats. And then she wanted a Christmas book too. And so they were able to read that book together that day. And the mother was also there with the child. And so she was helping the child along as well. So I know that's a very fast way of talking about our NTI days, but we're just so proud from the beginning in 1415 to where we are now, thanks to a lot of work of a lot of people. And I'll have to say kudos to Lisa because she's really set that digital stage for us for this to be so successful. So I'm going to turn my mic off. And I want to just for a second, because I know that Lisa, um, Lisa Salyer, she is a digital learning coach. And there's a lot of districts out there that you um, have a digital learning coach and you know how precious they are because they help grow. So there was a ton of tools that they talked about during NCI. When you talk about Zoom and Flipgrid and Padlet, um, your teachers, teachers are not exposed to that just you know, behind their, you know, within their four walls. And um, Lisa and the, and the instructional team here, you can tell, have had an, an intentional focus in coaching up their teachers in order for them to be proficient and, and use those tools within, um, you know, with their students. So kudos to the digital learning um, coaches out there. I know Laura Roganos and Ben Maynard and Marty Park and their team, Jeff Sabolsky, have really been uh, celebrating those individuals throughout the state. And uh, so kudos to Lisa for keeping this going. She would never say that, but she's amazing. So Some uh, questions are coming in about just the, the demographics of your area. Um, how big is your county? Uh, that kind of stuff. Okay. We we have uh, seven schools total, five elementary schools that run K through six, one middle school, seventh and eighth, and one high school that's nine through 12. And we also have one alternative school and, and a topic that may be uh, for a later term. Later time, we've started a virtual school as well. Uh, the focus originally was on our homeschool kids. We, we saw, we started getting a lot more students who are going on homeschool. Uh, 
uh, for a variety of reasons. So we wanted to make sure that, that those uh, students understood and had access to a uh, diploma. And so now if they go through a virtual program, they have a Johnson uh, Central High School diploma. And we started that this year and have already expanded. Our goal was within the next three to five years to expand to adult ed. We actually completed, had, had a, a, an adult be the first completer. And a neat story behind that, uh, he was supposed to graduate in 1969, which would have been the first year of Johnson Central High School. Instead, he completed in 2019. So we have a little secret, a little surprise for him. And during graduation this year, we're actually going to present him with his high school diploma 50 years later. So we're very proud of that. Um, as far we have about 3,500 students in, in our district. Uh, we're approximately uh, 65 to 72 percent free and reduced lunch somewhere. This depends on the time of the year. So we have a, a, a high number of uh, students on free and reduced lunch. Uh, about 15 percent um, of our students are special needs population. I'm not sure if you had any other questions demo, uh, about demographics. No, that's great. Thank you very much. And also, I just want to say um, thank you all so much for sharing. Like my post-it notes over here are just like flying off the desk. I have like so <laughs> many things that I am just writing down and trying to keep up and keeping up with the chat. So just, oh my goodness, like overwhelmed with a wealth of amazing, amazing knowledge. Loved it. Great episode. Thank you all so much for sharing today. Well, thank you. We I do want to say that we had to cut a couple of things short. We have we have some more that we'd love to share. So maybe we can get a plug and get invited back on one day. Just just to plug Johnson County Schools, uh, would love for you all to follow us on Facebook at Johnson County School District on Twitter at JC underscore Schools. And I want to end if we can with our new app. I want to invite each one of you to download that app and and follow all things Johnson County Schools. Are we ready to go? Is it? Can you share Lisa's screen back for just a second? Yeah, sure. Okay. Superintendent yes. Cochran, my hat's off to you. Just uh, you started with the why, and I think uh, you are key to this whole process. Um, so just strong leadership um, and leading from the very top helps things. Um, systematically be su successful throughout the district so my hat's off to you well thank you i appreciate that I, the biggest thing i've learned is you have to surround yourself with great people and, and we're doing just that with this play mm -hmm. are you unplugged what do we offer all this out, Miss Elaine. As long as Lisa's um, mic is turned on and she can hear it on her computer, it'll play. There you go. Brand new app for Johnson County Schools on Android and iPhone. It's everything JC Schools in your pocket. This is the home screen. Tap the schools icon in the top right or swipe left to select a specific school. Tap the three horizontal lines in the top left or swipe right to see all the menu items. To turn on push notifications, tap settings and select turn on notifications. You can even pick which school to receive notifications from. The events section shows a list of all events throughout the district. You can use this button to add an event to your calendar or tap here to share the event with friends and family. The cafeteria menu is listed under dining. Here you'll find an easy to navigate weekly menu sorted by day and meal type. Live feed is where you'll find updates from administration about what's going on in the district right now. Whether that's celebrating a student's success or reminding you about an upcoming deadline. Search Johnson County Schools in the App Store or Play Store to explore the app for yourself. It's everything JC Schools in your pocket. Anything else to add? No, we, I just want to again thank you all for allowing us to showcase all the things going on in Johnson County Schools.
All right, I think that was a pretty good episode. I am, uh, when I saw some of the things they were doing with their teacher's induction all the way down to NCI, I was, I was pretty blown away. Um, a great episode. Thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Johnson Central, for sharing and putting that together so that everyone can learn from you. And um, Elaine, do you care to tell everyone about how they can get continued support with Kentucky Go Digital and with some upcoming events? Absolutely. I am happy to. Uh, so if you can, uh, while you're here uh, at on YouTube, click that red subscribe button in the top right corner. As you do, you will continue to get updates and notifications as we add episodes across Kentucky. And if you are on Twitter, you can follow us on the hashtag KYGoDigital.com. And if you are free on um, next Thursday, we have an episode as well that is going to be on creating STEM op opportunities in your district. So join us again on Thursday at 11 o'clock. And um, if you can't be there live, we always have the power of pause on KentuckyGoDigital.com. Awesome. And also keep your eye out for all the regional Kentucky Go Digital dates that are coming up this summer. Um, you'll see them on Twitter. Um, if you're a district leader, push those out to your teachers and also uh, put them in your reminder because they're administrator settings as well. Um, thank you all. Um, I think we did during this show surpass the 2000 subscriber mark for the channel. So um, woo, it's a big deal. <laughs> um, and I've got to give a little shout out to Heather Worrell. She'll be very excited to hear that news. Um, she's off uh, rocking it out in Jefferson County today. Uh, but other than that, thank you again, Johnson County Schools. And keep celebrating this KY Go Digital on the hashtag. Bye. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or follow us.